Hi, I'm Ian Gordon along with Dennis Pitsenbarger and Nick Miles. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Fuel. We have two behind the wheels on this week's show, the Mitsubishi Eclipse Spider and the Yukon Denali. That's right, and it all starts right now. Brought to you by the Russ Auto Group. Hey, welcome back to Fuel. On this week's show, two behind the wheels, we're going to take a look at the Mitsubishi Eclipse Spider GT along with the Yukon Denali. Also, Dennis is going to be in the pits. Right now, we'd like to take a second to thank a special sponsor, the Russ Auto Group. They bring fuel to you each week. It's now time to take a look at some fuel news. With current gas prices, just about everyone looking for a new car or truck these days is more sensitive to fuel economy even those in the market for a full-size SUV. Is it possible to get better mileage in a large utility vehicle? At least one manufacturer plans to use its improved fuel economy as a selling point. Chevrolet claims its new 2007 Tahoe will be more slippery aerodynamically when it goes on sale early next year. But the big news is what Chevy and other manufacturers are doing under the hood, where sophisticated electronics can transform a brawny V8 engine into a thrifty four-cylinder whenever full power isn't needed. We have a feature called displacement on demand, which allows us to effectively send a signal to this connector here and disable the uh, valve actuation for both the intake and exhaust valves, effectively reducing the pumping losses and making the engine more efficient. Displacement on demand allows the engine, if you will, to, to run on either four cylinders or eight, so under a light cruise, uh, four of the cylinders basically shut off and of course when this happens you get a very very significant improvement in fuel economy ranging between 15 and 20 percent. With Chevrolet, Honda and Chrysler all offering versions of displacement on demand on some of their most popular models it is estimated that there could be more than two million vehicles with this technology on the road in the next three years all at a fraction of what gas electric hybrid engine vehicles cost. I'm Drew Maxwell. In recent years, American automakers like Ford and General Motors have lost market share, mainly to Asian brands like Toyota and Honda. And no wonder, quality surveys over the last decade showed the Asian cars consistently at the top of the rankings. But does that quality gap still exist today? Surprisingly, it has been Toyota that has had many large-scale recalls in the last two years, even as their scores and independent quality rankings continue to run high. But American automakers' scores have come up, as have those of the Europeans making the gap in quality today virtually non-existent. For GM and Ford, the increased quality has brought down warranty repairs, in GM's case over 40 percent. Both Ford and GM recently announced extensions from three to five years of their powertrain warranties, which cover the expensive engine and transmission parts of a car, as well as free roadside assistance. Ford will cap its warranty at 60,000 miles, GM at 100,000 miles, which GM claims makes it the best warranty available. Ah, but you say, don't those Korean brands Hyundai and Kia have 10-year warranties? They do, but you need to read the fine print. Those warranties only apply to the original owners. In the war to win car buyers, the American automakers know that's the kind of guarantee they need. I'm Chris Hansen. Still to come on Fuel, we're going to take a look at the Yukon Denali, and Dennis will be in the pit. Next, we're going to take a look at our first behind the wheel. It's the Mitsubishi Eclipse Spider. 